the modern-day institution, man's way of organizing belief systems into their different clans, cult-like attitudes, often driven by an existential perception, specialisms of some form or merely a naturally occurring passion. They are either built around a certain series of events or an apparent fact or claim, which stand as the cornerstones of said institution. It is therefore within the profiteers of said ideology's interests to not only suppress any evidence that may surface that would make their treasured institutions crumble to their very core foundation, but to actively destroy said relics whenever one gets an opportunity to do so. The Bamian Buddha, for example. Apparently this monstrous carving, perfectly bored into a sheer rock face in the Bamian Valley of central Afghanistan, is not only a relic, which we hypothesize, was left by a now lost civilization, but due to the facial features once masterfully depicted upon the statue, removed at some later time within history, carved flat, not only making its identification as Buddha questionable, it was for some reason completely destroyed during the Iraq War. Its destruction, I propose, supports our prior posit of it indeed being that of a lost civilization's work, this being the sole motive for such actions. Interestingly, hidden voids found behind the carving. If it were indeed a solid carving, as one would have once presumed when gazing upon it, how were these hollow chambers once placed behind said carving? Additionally, not only do most modern institutions deny any of the evidence we so often put forward on our channel, often in regards to a past law civilization, but fields such as geology is simply actively writing off countless ancient sites and anomalies as simply geological coincidences, their existence being an impossibility according to already established, supposedly concluded chronology for human civilization. One reoccurring strategy, which I like to call the pareidolia effect denial, has befallen countless sites of interest. One of the most hotly debated, being the face on Mars, now simply dismissed as a trick of light, the intriguing pyramidal features nearby, which also somehow align with Pleiades. This denial strategy has condemned other said features here on Earth, some of which found in remote places that, according to modern academia, have simply never been inhabited. Thus, regardless of the artificial nature of such places as Gornia Shoria, must be dismissed as mere coincidental geological features. The ruins clearly immense age, often used, in an unfortunate twist of fate, as support of such claims, as nature eventually reclaims all, thus the older the ruin, the easier this said denial strategy is to argue. That is, until now, in a modern era, where modern technology now allows us to collect a massive amount of information on simply anything, unexplained features, who parts, and many other advanced unexplained legacies of an antiquity, once hidden, now shared far and wide, evidence which flies in the face of modern paradigm. The Sharanian is yet another of these curious, clearly immensely old anomalies that regardless of its form, once being carved from extremely tough rock, maybe this is why our lost ancestors built with such enormous stones, and did so in an as yet unexplained, yet clearly highly advanced way, known as polygonal masonry. Perhaps they built like this so that their footprint here on our planet be long-lived, designed to deliberately be resistant to the elements, to reach us now in the modern day giving all of us an opportunity to understand the real history of our Earth, regardless of what others would like. We find all of these things highly compelling. There are countless, yet-to-be-explained ruins which can be found all over our globe. The proof of a now-lost, yet once highly capable, possible pre-flood civilization, having once existed and subsequently vanished suddenly and inexplicably, has now been identified on reportedly every continent. It is a continual problem for an academic world stuck on a paradigm of primitive and incapable ancestors of modern man. To explain these ancient anomalies, 
especially the many megalithic structures built using blocks, sometimes weighing upwards of a thousand tons in weight, cut, quarried, and then carried and lifted into place, all seemingly with ease. The only megaliths that any funded mainstream institution has ever attempted to explain are either those which are difficult to avoid, such as the ludicrous, fictitious illustrations made as an attempt to visually explain the construction of the pyramids, or those that lay unliberated or seemingly abandoned suddenly. For example, the stone of the pregnant woman in Baalbek, long contested as abandoned due to the gradient of the geography, particularly due to its weight of an estimated 1,000 tons, which has since, however, been recognized as not abandoned but part of an enormous prehistoric structure, which, thanks to the partial excavations which revealed this, discovered an even larger block below it. This denial, until excavation, was a mainstream explanation for its existence, all the while this conveniently ignoring the trilithon, also found within Baalbek, set aloft meters away, three 1,000-plus ton blocks sit within part of yet another ancient structure. Another megalith which requires explanation is a statue once claimed as Apollo himself, yet clearly cut with a technique reminiscent of the Moai, found on the incredibly remote Easter Island, which also possesses the lost technique of polygonal masonry. Yet I digress. His proximity to the Greek town of Apollonis being the reason for this claim of identity, although others have claimed that his actual identity is in fact Colossus of Dionysus, thanks to Wilhelm von Massow, who identified him as so in 1932. Today, it is simply classified as a kuros, a freestanding stone Greek statue, regardless of the fact that it is not freestanding, is carved from solid gray Naxian marble and weighs around 100 tons. Predictably, when such figures in terms such as 10 meter tall, solid marble, 100 ton standing statue enter the discussion, cognitive dissonance has seemingly overtaken the poor fellow who was responsible for its attempted explanation for transport on Wikipedia. Specifically, during the well-studied, well-understood ancient Grecian area, stating, quote, any explanation for how they intended to move the statue was not carved into stone." End quote. Short-circuiting during their contemplation of the gargantuan task they had placed upon this well-known civilization. Thus, the questions remain. Who was the Kuros of Apollonis? Who was cutting him free from the marble? And what happened to this civilization so suddenly? We find such questions highly compelling. One of the oldest, most widely recognized gods through ancient Mesoamerica is a being known as Tlaloc. Worshipped as a giver of life and sustenance, he was also feared for his ability to send hail, thunder, and lightning, and for being the lord of the element water. Appearing in many forms throughout Aztec history as usually water-dwelling creatures such as amphibians. Could his roots actually date back to the so-called Great Deluge, which has been noted in so many ancient religions throughout the world? Undoubtedly, the most impressive depiction of Tlaloc, which can be found anywhere, is his megalithic statue, found in the small town of Coatlachan. Clearly once a pilgrimage site, what's impressive regarding the statue is its size, weighing in at an estimated 168 tons the largest existing monolith in the Americas. Made from basalt, the workable stone for this monumental artwork was, at some point, transported to this spot in preparation for carving. The question is, how did our ancient ancestors move such enormous lumps of basalt, similar in size to those of the Moe statues, synonymous with Easter Island? Why did this ancient people revere water gods so much? Were these gods inspired by traumatic memories and legends left to them by their ancestors? Possibly a surviving fragment of the once flourishing civilization responsible for so many now unexplainable sites all over the world. 
Intriguingly, according to Aztec belief, Tlaloc was a god primarily connected with meteorological phenomena that was related to water. In 1963, the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City decided that the monolith should be placed at the entrance of the museum. The people of Coatlinchan eventually agreed to this request on the condition that a government road, a school, and a medical center be built in their city. On the 16th of April 1964, the monolith began its journey to Mexico City. The monolith of Tlaloc was transported on the back of a giant purpose-built trailer over a distance of about 30 miles. When the monolith arrived in the capital, it was greeted by a crowd of 25,000 people. Upon its arrival, the location mysteriously experienced an unusual storm. Clearly, an incredible ancient artifact, which we find highly compelling. There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient. Hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. However, there lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini, in particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have analyzed the stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen, with a color source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent. Found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore. Predictably, due to modern academia and the entrenched, paradynamically cast spell upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made highly ancient artwork, is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rock fall he found within the lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009, so any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization? Or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical assumption? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, 
resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide.